again, it's Charlie, and it's time for another review. Not, in the one, not another one of my long-winded tutorials from the past. And this time I want to review an album that I've loved since I first heard it. And it is an album that has been, I want to say, it's been shadowed by the album, by the album that followed after that. And probably by the album that followed before that. And I'm talking about this one. This one here. Dire Straits. Love Over Gold. It takes love over gold and mind over matter to Love Over Gold sits in the middle of the Dire Straits catalog. It comes before, comes before Brothers in Arms and it falls make, making movies. And it, not to say it wasn't a best-selling album, but it was a good-selling album. And it, it sort of laid the groundwork for what we will hear eventually in the album that we will become Brothers in Arms. In fact, in the way that the, the songs that they use, the songs that they play, and the songs that are performed here, run kind of long. In fact, in, in Love Over Gold, many of the songs run over seven minutes long. Down the telegraph road. Let's start with the opening track called Telegraph Road. And it's a long song. It runs almost 16 minutes long. And it has one of, the, one of Mark Knopfler's best guitar solos ever. It's at the, it closes the song out at the very end, but it runs a good six, seven minutes perhaps, maybe longer than that. It's just a wonderful, wonderful guitar solo. However, the song is more about America than it is about anything else. It's, for one thing, I've learned that Telegraph Road is an actual road that runs north or south of Detroit. And the song really much parallels the, the, the rise of Detroit as a small city to becoming an industrial complex and its, and its eventual decline. It's a mystery to me. The game commences. There are two tracks on side one, and it's the closing track after Telegraph Road, one called Private Investigation. And that song is about, it sort of has a film noir feel to it because it, it really draws the image in your mind of a black and white movie from the 40s or the 50s of a detective with the, with the fedora and the trench coat. And the, the you know, it has a, that feel of a, of a film noir type of a detective story. Great track. And it, the great al thing about this album is that it sounds really, really good on most in almost any format. I have it on record. I also have it on CD. I, have a, I don't have an original unremastered CD, but I got a, uh, the last remaster from a few years ago. And it's still good. It could be, I think it could be better. I know for a fact that this album has been remastered again by Mobile Fidelity for their SACD series, and I sh I'm sure it sounds spectacular, but I'm not ready to spend 40 bucks on this yet. So, turning the record over, we now start on the last three tracks. And the first of those three tracks is one that's, that actually was the only track that was released as a single in this country. I know, uh, I think Private Investigation was released as a single in the UK. I'm not entirely sure about that, but, but in the US, but uh, only one track off the album came off as a 45 single, and that is Industrial Disease. And that song is definitely about the UK. Because, I mean, it, it's, it, you know, Mark Knopfler is having, he's not, he's being rather sarcastic in, 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 the, in, the, in the lyrics and everything, but it's definitely about the UK. And I think at this time, not knowing my British history, but I think the UK was probably dealing with, um, Margaret Thatcher. So that brings us to the last two tracks on the album, one of which is the title track called, which is Love Over Gold. And it's an okay track. It's not my favorite track on the album, but it's okay. Kind of dark and kind of stark and everything. Oh, you were just a roller coaster memory. The closing track, which is It Never Rains. And never, It Never Rains is, a good, is another good track. I like it too. Mainly because there's another great Mark Knopfler exit guitar solo that trails off to the very end. So the album here, it's pretty stark. There's not much to it in terms of packaging. In fact, there's no pictures of the band whatsoever at all. You get the the great lightning cover here in the back, and you have this little bitty. Well, you get this little digital readout of a CRT computer screen, and inside there is merely the lyric sheet. There's not any, pictures, not any pictures of the band here, just lyric sheets and everything on both sides. And down in the lower corner, you, you can, I don't know if you can make that out, but it's pretty hard to read on both sides. Is more CRT uh, photographs of the lineup. According, according to some, this album was recorded at 30 IPS per second, 30 inches per second on the masters. But if that's the case, I think it probably adds to the high quality sound that's heard here. This is not your or this is not an ordinary recording. Because of that, if it was 
higher resolution recording done on analog tape, it probably leads, uh, leads well into what will become Brothers in Arms, which was, a, which was a full digital recording. So there are my thoughts on Love Over Gold. I love this album. I'm, I've always been a huge fan of, of Dire Straits, from, even from their first album. That, and I don't think these guys ever really cut a bad album at all. Even their last album which, uh, on Every Street didn't sell very well, supposedly. I thought that was a pretty good album. That was a pretty good album, too. Um, I think all their albums are really good. The one I don't really, really don't embrace is probably the second album. But, you know, every band goes through that sophomore jinx, and they're, and that's no, they're no ex exception. If Love of Gold is not in your collection, it should be in your collection. Because if you love Dire Straits and you love Sultan Sul 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 you know, there's more to this band than, than Brothers in Arms. That's, that's the main point I get across here. There's more to them than just Brothers in Arms, and there's more to them than just Salt as a Swing. And here, they sort of go off, you know, they don't go off the rails completely, they go off into a different tangent. A different tangent where I think the band fits really well in. Because it, this, this album really set the foundation for Brothers in Arms. If you love Brothers in Arms, you need to listen to uh, Love Over Gold.